Hello, hello, and welcome back to Girl We Gotta Talk. I'm your host, Alina Jakes. Welcome back for another episode. Hope everybody is having a great day so far. I'm so excited about today's episode. I talked with actually another podcast host, which I love to do because I feel like they just, they get it. You know, they understand, they know what's up, and I seriously had the best time. I had, um, Ama Apia on. She's, like I said, the podcast host of The Bonnet Talks, and she's currently studying in South Korea. So we say it at the beginning of the episode, but it's literally 8 a.m. where she was when we recorded this. She woke up and recorded this for us today. So thank you so much, Ama. Like, we love that selflessness. But I'm so excited for you guys to hear today's episode. I think it's such a good conversation. We talk a lot about um, basically like post-grad and the expectations that we set for ourselves when we're in school to what actually happens when you graduate. And we talked a lot about, you know, corporate world and um, the loneliness that post-grad brings, um, like I said, the high expectations you put on yourselves, things like that. Also just how to navigate all of that. And her podcast, The Bonnet Talks, is such a good podcast. I'm going to link it in the show notes. You guys can listen to it. But it's basically, it's such a similar podcast to this one. And she just talks a lot about like motivating young people. Um, She talks a lot about post-grad and just kind of like navigating um, your 20s. So we love that. We really do love that. I had the best time talking with Alma. I think she's such a down to earth, great personality. And, you know, we just love that she woke up at 8 a.m. for us. So, so I hope you guys enjoy this episode as much as I did. Let's jump in. We have Alma Apia on today's podcast. Welcome. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I should say good morning because you are in Korea right now. Um, I am. It's not morning where I am, but good morning. How are I, you? Good, good. It's going to be a good day. I mean, I know it's always funny because now from now on, I have to like adjust to the time zone difference. And I'm always just like, hello. I don't know what time it is in your area, but good morning, good afternoon, good night, you know, <laughs> the whole spiel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, well, I'm so excited to have you on. So you are a podcast host yourself, which I love and your content is amazing. I feel like we have similar content. I feel like similar listeners and I thought it'd be so fun to chat with you, um, on pretty much everything. But before we jump in, I wanted to ask you some fun, like, like rapid fire questions. So if you're ready, we can jump into those. Let's go. I can't tell you how rapid they'll be though. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> honestly like I always say rapid fire questions and then with the guests like I always have follow-up questions and it turns into just a full-on like I don't know I should just say I have questions for you because they're never fast <laughs> no they end up being um, an essay yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> um okay the first one is what is one thing you regret spending money on one thing I mean I if there's say- more <laughs> <laughs> okay I don't know if this is weird but like just living in DC um when I was like there not studying abroad just I was always delivering food is that like I regret spending money on all that there's no need to do that it's so easy it's so it's a click of a button and your food is like I'm like uber eats does not need to come today I could have walked down the street for that I really I I'm with you. I'm with you. I had some random self-control on Saturday and my friends and I wanted to order food to the house and it was like 70 degrees outside. It was literally the perfect day. And my my friend's like, let's just like Uber eats it. And I looked at her and I was like, that is so like, we're not doing that. We're getting off the couch. (laughs) We are going to walk there and we're going to get dinner and then we'll walk back. And then, you know what? Dinner will taste a lot better. You know, it'll taste a lot better. (laughs) exactly um, i'm so, so proud of you that's a good one that's good <laughs> that was a rare I moment um but it, i needed to brag um and then what is do you have any hidden talents like what's your hidden talent mm, i don't know if it's like hidden but i just don't like talk about it often but i sing i songwrite i love playing guitar i'm gonna start learning i play acoustic guitar but i'm switching into electric now oh my gosh that is so cool yeah you know, i love it that <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. So you song, right? Like, what is your, like, what do you write about now? See, this is what I do. I just ask questions. <laughs> I, question. I know it's, I really just like draw from my own experiences. I might just be like really cliche, but also like, I feel like not much happens in my life. So I love like, <laughs> I love um like just writing from different perspectives and like getting creative with that. I think it's always fun. It's kind of like, it's like creative writing almost yeah. with like, 
other people's stories and things like that. I've always, like, since I was younger, I've always loved writing books. And I've always thought I'd like, part of me wanted to be part of like one of my many dreams was to be an author. <laughs> so that kind of transition into like songwriting because I love music. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. How cool. Yeah, okay. Very fun. <laughs> I wish I could. I mean, I sing, I sing a lot, but it's not great. Um, <laughs> what is something that you are looking forward to? I feel like this is very, pretty vague, but just something that you're looking forward to. So I'm graduating in, let's see, T minus 32 days. <laughs> yeah. So I will be having my MBA in May. Um, and I'm honestly so excited. Like, I just want to be done, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> school. my mom was like, are you going to do more? Like, you're going to do more school. I already know it. Like PhD law school. I was like, girl, <laughs> I said, do you know these classes? <laughs> like these classes are actually horrible. <laughs> oh my, well, that's so exciting. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank um, you. And the last one I have is just any dream vacation that you have, maybe after this graduation, because I feel like you're going to need it, but dream vacation. <laughs> I know. So it's kind of funny because I'm literally on my dream vacation right now, even though it's not really vacation I'm studying, but, um, I'm in Seoul, South Korea. So I've always wanted to be here and we can talk about this maybe later in the podcast, but I prepared about three years to be here, like learning the language and everything. So to actually be here is kind of surreal. (laughs) Yeah. So my my dream vacation, maybe like after classes end, it'll be a vacation that I can say that's my dream. vacation. Exactly. There you go. (laughs) There you go. Perfect. Okay, cool. Well, that kind of leads me into my next question. So I want to get to know you a little bit better as far as like school and college. I think, um, it's so cool that you're even studying abroad. Like I, that's probably my biggest regret is not studying abroad while I was in school. And I had some friends that did it and like loved the experience. And I just felt like there was never in my head, there was like never the right time. Like I was like, Oh, Mm. if I do it, maybe it's like next semester. Cause like this isn't this. And like, I always made the excuse and I like hate myself (laughs) for that. Um, because like really, what was I going to miss? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about like, um, school, like what your major is, what got you into like wanting to study abroad, like learn the language and all of that. Yeah. So, um, I went to UConn university of Connecticut graduated in 2019. Um, and I was a double major in communication and molecular biology. Um, so very, very different (laughs) majors. Um, but I was pre-med at the time. So I thought I was going to med school. Um, and then my, my last year I was like, I don't actually think I want to do this. Um, I know I can do it, but I I just don't, I don't see the vision here. I think, you know, things have changed in terms of what I want for my life, um, and what I actually want to do. So, um, I decided to work for a year. And then once I, 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 I guess I could say where I worked too. I, I worked in fashion merchandising for about a year and a half. So again, very different from what I studied. Um, but you know, still, you could still translate a lot of the skills from my majors into that work. And then once uh, the pandemic hit, <laughs> it all coincided. Once the pandemic hit, I actually started my master's um, at the GW or George Washington University School of Business, and I'm getting my global MBA. Um, and so it's just pretty much international business focused. Yeah. So Um, that's what I've been doing the past two years. Um, and then I'm spending my semester at Korea university school of business, continuing the same major here. Um, and it's been an incredible, incredible experience to actually be studying international business and be abroad and kind of learn it through another lens. It's awesome. And also I think learning business from the capital of our, our country and, um, being at in DC, I think is incredible because just things change so much in terms of culture and, you know, policy and to actually experience it alongside my studies, I think is really eye opening and, um, perspective shifting. So I, I feel very, very blessed to be having an education that is so holistic and, um, gives me a lot of opportunity to learn from so many different people, make so many different friends and, um, yeah, experience it to the fullest. So that's what I've been doing in terms of education. <laughs> that's your cool, like experience that you're getting. You're getting literally the full experience. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you grow up in Connecticut and that's why you went to Yukon or what drew you to going to Yukon originally? Yeah. So I went to, I, I grew up in Connecticut to be okay. honest, no hate to Connecticut. Y'all know. I love y'all. Yeah, you said y'all it like <laughs> y'all know. I love Yukon. I was student body president there. So no one can tell me I wasn't for Yukon, but I'm just saying I was not planning to go there. Okay. Like, okay. I got it. To to school, but I loved it. It's awesome. <laughs> 
Um, and then when you went to school, did you always think like, I want to go abroad? Like I want to be able to study in a different country or did the way that like your kind of journey went led you there? Like what, did you have that initial like one or did it, you kind of just figure it out and say like, okay, this is something I want to do. Yeah. So actually no, because kind of similar to you, Alina, like I had always wanted to study abroad in undergrad, but because of my majors and because of the fact that I was on the pre-med track, there was no way I could have fit it in Right. because it was, I was a double major. I was taking like, I think 21 credits a semester. And when you're taking STEM courses, a lot of them don't easily transfer over from abroad. So I was advised to, you know, not do that and just finish everything um, at home. And also mm-hmm. I think, I think I had this feeling of, you know, I don't want FOMO. Like I was like, I don't want to miss things oh. in college. You know what I mean? Like it's similar to what you said. Like, I was just like, I feel like there's a lot that I'm going to miss. And I, I want to make sure I experience this, these four years to the fullest. I think now looking back, I don't think that was a uh, good reasoning. Yeah. <laughs> but it I, was- I, it's so funny. It's like, what really were we going to miss? Like, that's what, I know. I was I was like, what like, are we really missing? You know, I was like the music festivals, we could come back the tailgating. <laughs> we didn't need, we didn't need all that. We did and we never had it because of the pandemic. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, but you know, so that was, there was, those are the two reasons, yeah. um, but it wasn't until post-grad when I had more time to really sit down and say, okay, like, what am I going to do outside of work? Like, who am I as a person outside of work? Because my Mm -hmm. issue was, I always talk about this on my podcast. I was, we were working eight hours a day, right? Nine to five. You really don't have any time before or after that, right? So you get up, you go to work, you come home, you're so tired from work and then you cook dinner and then maybe you like watch TV and go to bed. And people do this for like the next 40 years of their lives. And I'm like, (laughs) I cannot... (laughs) I was just like, I would talk to people at work and they'd be like, yeah, I've been here for like 25 years, 30 years. I was like, the numbers keep going up. Like you guys need to go somewhere else. (laughs) (laughs) You guys need to go, (laughs) go, go and do something else. You know, and it's okay. Some people, you know, enjoy that. And I'm not knocking that down. I just knew for me, I was like, I want to spend some time building other skills and like learning other things. And that was one of the sentiments that led to me studying Korean And then I realized through language learning and just building other skills in that way, I realized how much um, Korea had to do or was very similar to what I wanted to do as a career. Like they were investing in similar interests that I had. So once I realized that um, and got to know myself a little bit more, I was like, you know, I think it's important for me to study abroad and have the opportunity to go somewhere else to also nurture my perspectives, right? And really see if number one, this is what I want to do. And number two, just, I think it's so important to educate yourselves in more the, more ways than one. Like, I think it's so important to have experiential experiences. Um, and so that's, that's really why this time around, when I was applying to grad schools, I said, this needs to be a priority. So even though I knew a lot of grad programs did not have um, study abroad opportunities, which I mean, in business, it depends, right? More so than others. Um, it's harder to find those experiences, um, but I made it a top priority for myself. And so that's also why I went to GW as a global MBA major um, because you know international business focused, they had the study abroad experience built in already. So, and they had the partnership with the university already. So um, I said, this is like what I want to do. This is where I want to go. And this is what is going to help me get there. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Okay. So I have a couple of follow-up questions because, mm-hmm. or at least I want to talk about some things that you said. So the first thing being the weird, like work-life balance. And I think people throw that out all the time of like, mm-hmm. it's so hard to like find work-life balance. Like it is because when yeah. you're working the entire day, I mm-hmm. like, it really blows my mind too, because growing up and I've talked about this in my podcast too, where like, growing up, I've always just looked up to the adults in my life about like, okay, well, that's what my future is. My future is going to be working at a company. Like you said, for like 20, 30, 40 years, I'm going to stay there and I'm just going to have the same, it's like groundhog day, like just have the same day, like over and over and over again. And I just thought that was like a normal thing. Mm -hmm. And like, let me tell you when I got the job that I have currently, I've been in this job for two years, I got it literally the week 
or I think I officially like my start date was like the week after the pandemic hit. So I had it like before then, but like, wasn't going to go in until after like the March 13th, March 14th. Mm. And I have been working from, I've been working remote since obviously. And I don't know if I can go back to being in an office full time Mm. like that and not being able to have flexibility, like make my own lunch or like go run an errand at my lunch break or, you know, like have this weird, like work-life balance. Like I like that. I I don't know how people lived their lives before this. Like it's, I found, I saw a TikTok the other day and she was like, what? Okay. People in their twenties, like, what do you guys do after work? Cause like, I just make dinner, I shower and I watch TV. Like, are you guys doing anything else? Like, what are we supposed to be doing? And I was like, that is so relatable. Cause like, what do we do? Like, what is going on? You know, it's such an interesting, um, like dynamic to figure out and like navigate. No. And that's the thing. That's why I think a lot of people after, uh, graduation, they feel lost because they realize they're just in this cycle of is number one, you're not really sure what you really want to do. I feel like Yes, you could come out of college, right, and and have that sentiment, but I think once you're in a different environment, right, and you're not in that safety net of what college is, mm-hmm. um, you start to question a lot about, like, is this something that you want to do? And that's perpetuated by the fact that we have the same routine every day and a lack of work-life balance, right? And so um, I get this all the time of, like, my, my friends and just people who even listen to my podcast emailing me or asking me, they're like, what do you do? Like, how, how do you make this into a viable, you know, work-life balance? Like, how do you actually live your life? And it's like, you can't, if you follow that every single day. And I think that's why it's so important to factor in the things that you like to do. And even if you um, don't know what those things are, spend some time understanding, okay, what were the things that drove me when I was younger? What were the things that I loved to do naturally without the pressures of, okay, I have to do this in this time, or I have to go to this place or this person's expecting this of me, right? Um, Look at those things and realize, like understand, okay, maybe those are the things that make me happy. And those are the things that I need to factor in to my day-to-day work life balance and, you know, kind of balance it out that way. Um, Because it gives, it breathes a little bit more life to your, to your day to day instead of kind of the dinner. And then the, the TV and then Dinner the bed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I talked to somebody, I had a guest on and they said, kind of like what you just said, they said, think about like, if you're struggling with like, you don't have anything else going on about your job, think about mm. what you like to do as a kid yeah. and what like made you excited. And like, yeah. not talking about like playing with chalk in the driveway, but just like things like, oh, do you like to sing for instance, like start mm-hmm. doing some of that. Like do you like to play soccer? Like maybe join a rec league, like stuff like Mm -hmm. that. Like find what you used to be really like passionate about Mm -hmm. and like, just like explore that, like see what that's like in your adult life. Cause I think Mm -hmm. that that's the other struggle with like the post-grad, um, is remembering and like finding who you are. Cause I think for those four years, or if you go to grad school, those like couple of years, you are in this weird bubble And Mm -hmm. like, for me personally, I was definitely like a different version of myself in college. Like I had this plan Mm -hmm. and I thought that I like, liked certain things. And then when I graduated, I was like, "Mm, do I, um, I'm different now. And I don't know what to do with that. Cause now I'm in this real world bubble. I'm out of that little college bubble. I'm in a new bubble. Like, Mm -hmm. what do I do now? So I think Mm -hmm. it's so important to like find what interests you now? Like it's, you know, you grow every day. Like you can figure out new things about yourself all the time. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing though, you'll be surprised how reaching back into your little toolbox that you've had, they just haven't opened in a very long time. Mm -hmm. It's, it's crazy to me how opening that that up really leads you to new opportunities because part of the reason why I studied Korean was because I realized I was like, Oh, you know, I used to dance when I was younger. I used to like love like learning K-pop choreographies. Um, I loved, I had haven't danced in like four years because of college and people don't really know that version of me. So I like, I'm going to dive back into that because I know that genuinely made me happy. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I was learning just, I was learning different genres of dance, but I uh, specifically leaned into K-pop because I haven't learned it in like years, like since I was 10, I think. 
And then I realized, I was like, wait, I really enjoy this. Like things have changed so much, but I really enjoy it. And then I was watching interviews of these artists and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated by just reading the captions. Like this is, I'm missing the nuances of what they're saying. I can read it and maybe I can read why they're laughing, but it's not the same. And so I was like, you know what? I have a lot of time. I'm going to learn Korean. Wow. And that, yes. And then learning Korean made me realize how much I enjoy learning languages. And I was like, oh, like this is kind of fun. So then I was learning languages, right? I was learning Korean and I looked more into, I read more about Korean history and Korean culture and watched a lot of videos on it and like just read a lot. And that's how I realized, I said, wow, they're investing a lot in, you know, entertainment, innovation, tech. I really enjoy those things on a global scale. Maybe this is something that could factor into my career. It might make me really happy with the kind of work that I do. And that's when I said, oh, I'm ready to go to grad school to pursue this. So once you like dive deep, right, into what you genuinely like to do naturally, like what comes naturally to you in terms of happiness, right, that will end up leading to leading you to understanding, okay, these are the next steps I need to take in order to incorporate this in my life all the time. Because my thing is, it's like, why do something you're not, you, you're not passionate about? It doesn't, you know, why do something that doesn't make you happy, right? You're doing it like clockwork, right? And so you might as well take the time to put in the work, right? To really identify what are the little things that make you happy and what are your must haves? For me, I realized I was like, you know, I need to dance. I love dancing when I was younger. And I realized I haven't done that in a long time, mm -hmm. years. And that was part of why maybe college wasn't the best for me because I wasn't doing things I naturally just loved doing. And people didn't know me for that and they don't need to, right? But again, as you mentioned, Elena, like it was another version of yourself in college that might not really apply anymore because you're just outside of that environment. So mm -hmm. you need to identify your must-haves, incorporate those things. And you have no idea, maybe it will lead you to something bigger and you're like, oh, this is what I actually need to do. Like it's way different than what I had before, but maybe this is why I like this and I need to pursue that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. So that was a crazy story. I didn't realize that's <laughs> like what you like that would, that's what drove you to like where you are now. That is so, yeah. crazy. so it's like, so look what, random. It <laughs> what, when you yeah. were telling the story, my jaw was just like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> That's too much time. Um, I was like, yes. nine to five. and then I was like, I'm not, I don't want to just watch TV. Like the voice comes on every, uh, the bachelor comes on. I'm like, I don't need to watch this. Most yeah. of the it's <laughs> it's really, frustrated. yeah. It's really interesting because I, I think as we like grow, we realize that we just need more, like we just need mm. more going on for ourselves. And I think we start looking to find things that we enjoy. And like, mm. I think what you were saying, like, I'm sick of watching the bachelor. Like I stopped watching the bachelor. Cause like, I just, I needed something. I need something else. Wow. And yeah. like, I started cooking and I've been like mm. cooking a lot more and like getting into that. And like, that's what I'm doing mm. after work. Like I'm enjoying it. And yeah. it's fun for me. And like, that's something yeah. so small, but it's like, okay, well mm -hmm. now I'm like cooking all these things. And like, I'm, you know, it's just nice to just find something that's not the same mundane thing that you're doing all the time. No, but no. Awesome. I think I it's really <laughs> tough to like navigate post-grad, which I want to get your thoughts on. So like going into like after undergrad, did you have this like vision of what you wanted to do? And like, maybe it wasn't exactly what you had envisioned or what, like, what was your experience post-grad? Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, don't we all like, again, like I was, I went into college thinking I was going to be a dermatologist. Mm -hmm. I thought I, my life and as a Virgo, as a huge planner, I'm like, yeah, my life is all planned out. Like I'm going to be in school, like med school for four years after my four year college. And then I'm going to do my residency. But by the time I'm done, I'm going to be like 32 probably. And this is what my life is going to be. And you, you work towards that. And sometimes it's like, I remember it was like junior year. I'm like working towards this goal. And I'm just like, who am I doing this for? Cause I don't think it's me anymore. Mm. It's not, I'm doing this routine and it's not fun for me anymore. I'm worried about what other people are going to say. I'm not even worried. I'm not even considering my own feelings. I pushed down my own feelings to pursue this goal because I told myself that's what I was going to do, but I, you have to think about the context in which you've told yourself that, in which you've made these goals. 
circumstances change, your, your viewpoints change, especially when you're in college and you're, you're growing and you're learning so many new things at one time, you're meeting so many people, there's so many, so much stimulation, right? The context changes. And I realized I was like this, I'm not doing this for me anymore. And I don't like that. And it's not exciting for me. And when I went, went into postgrad, the person I was, was completely different than I would have ever <laughs> thought I was going to be. My plans had changed. My, what excited me had changed and maybe not changed in the sense of, you know, like there were fundamental things, right? Like dance, for example, just, let's just throw that out there. Like fundamental things that, you know, did make me happy. That never changed. But in terms of my perspective, it changed. So I was like, how do I do things within this new context that works for me? Because it's not working anymore. Um, and that's why in postgrad, I said to myself, okay, like this is a new version of myself. What do I have to do in order to understand what that means? Right. Because I think that's another thing of like, and this could be a side topic, but you know, when, once you do leave postgrad, there's a difference between recognizing that you are a different person. And there's another thing of actually understanding mm -hmm. and understanding like what that actually is and identifying, oh, this is what it is. And that's where we get very lost. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the times when I talk to people, they're like, yeah. I don't really know. I don't get it. Like, I, I don't know why I can't do this anymore. Like, why does this not feel right to me anymore? It's hard to identify what that is and actually create a resolution for that. Um, and so in postgrad, I realized I was like, okay, this is, I recognize that this is not working for me anymore. How do I get to this other point? Um, and it was tough. It was tough to try and like, you know, fit this into this new context when, you know, in my case, I moved to a new city and then you don't really know anyone and you're starting over from the beginning because you're, you've just graduated. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, it's tough. Um, I don't know if I really answered your question, but <laughs> it was, well, it, it was I don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know either, but I resonate with that so much because I think I also had some plans and thoughts about like, what I was going to do post-grad. And then literally as soon as I graduated and like, I moved back home after school, yeah. I was like, Hmm, I not regret, but I now see this going completely different, but I don't even know where that is. Like, and I right. felt so like, I felt frustrated because I felt like, especially my senior year, um, I really worked my little tail off and I like, missed out on a lot of, not that it's the biggest deal, but a lot of social things with just friends yeah. and like spending time with people because I was just like grinding every single day. Right. And I look back at that and I'm like, oh, like that just sucks because I really put so much time and effort into something that I like ultimately don't do for a living. Mm -hmm. Um, my original plan was to be a, um, reporter, like a news reporter. And no I was super passionate about it for my whole four years of school. I mm -hmm. did a lot of like news reporting at the school. And I did just so much like extracurricular stuff to like build up my resume mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it. Like there's nothing yeah. that I regret about that because I really did love every single moment of it. It mm -hmm. really tired me out and I missed out on a ton of stuff, but I did mm -hmm. really like it. I just, once I graduated was like, I just don't know if that's the exact route I want to go. But now I'm like, shit, I don't know where that is though. Like, and I felt, mm -hmm. like I said, I felt frustrated and then I felt kind of just bummed out. I felt kind of lonely. I was like, well, it seems like everybody around me is doing the job that they intended to do. And here I am looking for something that may not be what I said I was going to do and may not be what I was working to to do. And so I just felt like alone in that, which I think is just, I feel bad that I felt alone. Cause I'm like, there are so many other people that were going through that. Yeah. Um, when I talk to people now, like it's such a common thing to like, not necessarily love what you kind of intended. Like once you graduate, like things do change. And I think what you kind of said earlier was like, you're in this crazy, like very stimulated mm -hmm. environment. And for me, that was like, my professors and my peers, like my classmates and like everyone was such a like hustler in yes. that environment. And everyone yes. was like, I'm going to be the best at this. So it was like kind of competitive. And I was like, was. 
wait, yeah, I do want to be a reporter. Like I, I have to do this, this, and this, and like, I have to be the best. And I'm, I did pick up like good qualities from that. I feel like I do work hard still today, but I think that environment, like kind of like messed with me a little bit. I was like, what am I working so hard for? Like my, my roommates don't work this hard. You know, it was a weird (laughs) environment. I know. I know what you mean. Coming from someone who was pre-med, that community, y'all, I'm sorry if you're listening, but you know how rough it is. The most competitive ever. <laughs> like, so I, trust me, I know. And that's the thing is when you see everyone else going for this goal and they're like very focused, you're like, well, I don't have time to also be wishy-washy. I, this is what I want. And you convince yourself. You re- we really do convince ourselves that this is what we want to do. And the second that's taken away from us, when we're not in that environment anymore, we're automatically like, oh, wait a second. This is not, <laughs> this is not the same thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's really and- like, yeah. And I think a lot of people like hit that moment once they graduate. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's just important to like give yourself a little grace in that moment because that yeah. is a normal feeling. But I wish that someone was there to be like, Hey, you're going to figure it out. You're going to get a job. You're going to like, you know, you're going to go through the motions. You're going to figure out what you like, what you're passionate about. And you're going to be okay. Cause like in that moment, it's like panic. Like you're like, Oh my God, I just went to school and paid all that money for four years. And now Mm -hmm. I'm at home doing what, you know what I mean? Like you're like, and it's so tough when you talk about the support level of it. Right. And kind of tying into something you said way, way earlier of Like I, how do I say this? Like when you, you want that support from people, but you get the, you get the pressure, right? Because number one, you're comparing yourself to everyone because of accessibility with social media. We have an insight to everyone's lives and we compare ourselves so much based on how everyone else is doing. Right. So there's that one thing, but then there's also, I think generationally we are Gen Z um, I'm 97, everyone. So I'm very, very early Gen Z. Hey, 97. <laughs> Gen Z early. <laughs> so there is, I'm, I'm still, I still count myself. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think generationally we're very much hustlers and we expect ourselves to literally carry everything. Like we are supposed to have the nine to five job, but then also the side hustles, but then also the X, Y, and Z. But then we also have our parents from a different generation who they're used to being in the same job for 40 years and saying, you know, I'm going to work my way up and stay at this company and it's different. And so when you talk to your parents about these things or even just professors sometimes, um, it's just, it's hard because it's like, you have one narrative being told to you like, oh no, you just stick with it. Like everyone has to work a job they don't like to do. Or, you know, like this is Mm -hmm. like X, Y, and Z. And then you have Gen Z who everyone is, striving, working their ass off, excuse my friend, working their ass off towards this goal. And it looks like they're doing well at it. And it looks like they're enjoying it, but no one's really talking about or being vulnerable about, is that actually what they want to do? They just put up a front a lot of the times, or they have this pressure to do it all. Um, and so when we have all, we're, we're stimulated, not just by our school environments, right. And the, uh, the university experience, but once we're in postgrad, it's everything. Now we have everyone kind of talking at us and then we're like more confused. Yes. (laughs) And like, I, we love, you know, we, we have a love hate relationship with social media. Um, but I think the tough part about the social media stuff, like going to post-grad was like, I was seeing, I remember still being literally in a classroom, going on my phone really fast before class started and seeing people's LinkedIn posts and Facebook posts of, Hey, um, quick announcement, just got a job, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, can you relax? Like we're literally in class. Like I don't need the stress. Like I'm already freaking out. Like, so it's so easy to be like, well, she has a job and they have jobs and I don't have a job yet. I didn't get a job until the end of July after like I graduated in May and I got a job at the end of July. And to me, cause in my circle, everyone was employed by the time we graduated, except for me, which felt terrible. And honestly, that doesn't even matter. And to be Mm. honest, if you're listening right now and you're about to graduate and you're freaking out, please don't honestly enjoy the vacation, like go Mm. move back home, go do what you have to do, but enjoy it. Like, and that's what a lot of people did tell me. They were like, I know you're probably like job searching like crazy and you're stressed, but like, enjoy the time you have. And honestly, I did like those couple months. Mm -hmm. I like saw friends and spent time with family and like took a beat because like, again, we talked about how stressful and competitive school was. 
I left that environment and then I just got to sit down for a second and I was like, well, this is kind of nice. Like, I mean, I was jobs, I was looking for jobs on the couch, but I was sitting on the couch and I was just enjoying my time because after you get that first job, like you're going to be working pretty much the rest of your life. Um, I think it's so important to just like take a second or at least like push your start date back. But, um, yeah, it's tough out there when you just see those LinkedIn posts. I was like, can you relax? Like, (laughs) and you know what, a lot of those first jobs, like I'm thinking of specific people I graduated with. And a lot of those jobs, like those people are not in currently because it was like not a great role. Like they took it too fast. They didn't know what they were getting themselves into. They took a job. I think in my personal opinion, maybe just to say, I have a job, you know, and people wanted to be able to say that when they walked across the stage, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. No. And I think it's also, that's the thing. It's, it's that. And it's also the security of it, of like, I don't care what job it is. Like if I get one, I'm just going to have to do it, you know? And I, I was just talking to someone, she's an exchange student here with me. Um, she's from New York. And she was just saying, she was like, I don't want to start this job that I got. Like I need to look for something else. And I said, well, why did you accept it? And she's like, because I don't have any other choice. And we think that we literally have no other choice. Yeah. So we make decisions that might not be the best ones for ourselves because number one, it looks better. Number two, we tell ourselves that it's better. And number three, would you rather have it or none, right? So we make these decisions, but it's not necessarily the best for us. And I don't think we take the time or we don't give ourselves the grace or the room to take the time and say, I can actually pause and take my time and make the right decision for me. Um, and I'm, I, I think it's one of the most important things you can do in, um, in post-grad, especially at the age that you graduate generally, right? When you're, we generally graduate, right? Uh, undergrad in early twenties, that's the time you can take to relax. You don't have time <laughs> later telling you as someone who's 24, yeah. I'm not like old, but like, I'm telling you, there's we're like no- back in the day when we graduated and we're literally 24 years. No, <laughs> like, I know, right. Like literally yeah. back in the day, but you know, it's like, I see it now of like, I kind of wait, I miss those times, you know, oddly don't romanticize those tough moments of post-grad, but like, you know, it's just like, I wish, like I realized how much important, like in how much time I did have, which I did. Right. Cause I spent, you know, when I was working, I, I did spend time to build up skills and stuff and do things I love to do, but um, it's important to realize that we're not going to have this kind of time again. We're not going to be the same age again. Right. So just have fun and do the things that will help you realize what you like to do or who you are as a person. I think that's ultimately just as important as making money or finding that first job. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I love that. I I completely agree. And I think like, ultimately, if, if, if you're listening and like, you're going through post-grad life right now, or you're about to, and you're stressed, I think like the biggest thing to take away from this is like, it's not that it's not that serious. And I think like we go into post-grad, we graduate and there's all this stress on finding the right job for you. Like just taking a job to take it, the pressures of other people around us, whether that's family or people you're just like comparing yourself to whatever it is, it's not that serious. Everything is going to work out. Mm -hmm. And I know that's so annoying to hear, but like, cause people would tell me, (laughs) me, like, I'd rather you just be quiet. Cause like that didn't help me. (laughs) <laughs> but it's true. It's true. And you know, the first job that I got, I didn't love, I worked in it for like several months and I, that's fine though. Like, and I found that out about myself and I was like, okay, so I'm going to go a different route and that's fine. And I kind of enjoyed the process. Like mm. I was figuring out who I was. I wasn't really stressed about it. I just was like, okay, so that sucked a little bit. Um, that's not what you thought it was going to be, but you know what, we're going to navigate this and we're going to just going to like move on to the next thing. And mm-hmm. I think that's like the biggest part is like, just give yourself a little grace in all of this because it's, it can be so high stress and it can feel like you're alone and like, you're like, you're down in the dumps about it, but like, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to work out. Um, yeah. what was like, what would like you tell yourself in that time now? Hmm. Honestly, a lot of things. I feel like, <laughs> like girl, get off the Instagram. <laughs> Maybe that's what it would be. But I think, um, I think, well, I think the biggest thing is just trust yourself. Yeah. I think 
grad in graduating you because you're just thrown into this whole new world and you just have a lot of different opinions at the same time you tend to you just be reliant on those opinions you seek them out and then when you do seek them out you, you get too many too much feedback and then you're like well what do I do or like then you consider everyone else except yourself yes. in that whole process and that really delays you because then you're just like well, what do I like to do? And you just, you've just delayed it so much because you factored everyone else's opinion. And I'm not saying don't do that. I think one of the number one things that, you know, people come to me for advice and they have always said, oh, I talked to this person. I talked to this advisor and I talked to my parents and I talked, and yes, like, I think identify like three core people that you really value their, their input and their feedback and, and take that into consideration, but recognize that the biggest feedback you're going to get is from yourself. And you actually, I think we think that we don't know, right? The answer, we don't know. We're like, oh, we don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. But really your gut feeling tells you like, oh, this didn't feel right. Like I'm someone who I'm an extrovert. So and I get my energy from other people, right? So I was always talking to other people, asking for what they think, what they thought, but I never asked myself, like sat myself down and said, what do you like? Right. Regardless of whatever, if, if you didn't have these pressures of everyone else looking at you or you having like you having social media or people expecting this of you, what would you actually do? <laughs> and it's a hard question to ask yourself, but you, if you don't sit down <clears throat> and actually take time to work that out. You're not going to, you're not going to know the things that make you happy. You're not going to know your must haves. You're not going to know if this job is right for you. You're just going to kind of do things like clockwork. And I wouldn't have been able to have that conversation with myself unless I said, wait, I'm a, I trust you. Like, you know what it is. You might be confused now, but it's there. You subconsciously know what makes you happy. You know, the things you naturally like to do. You, so you pick friends, right. In post-grad, I think you are, you should be selective, I think, but you naturally gravitate towards, gravitate towards people that, you know, support you in the way that you want to be supported. Mm -hmm. So number one, so you know what you like, you know, how you want to be supported and you know what you need to surround yourself with because you're, you're naturally doing that without even thinking, Oh, I'm, I'm actually actively doing this. Right. And so trust that and, you know, take the time to build that trust and that relationship with yourself and you will find your way. I, I realized that like halfway through, I think it was like my first year of postgrad. I realized that halfway through, cause I was like, again, I was asking everyone for their opinions and it would just make me feel worse. And I was like, why don't, why can't I figure this out myself? Like, why don't I know? And then you've now put yourself on this platform, right? Of now everyone really knows like you're confused and it doesn't help. It just adds more pressure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, I would just say, trust yourself, trust your gut. You actually know. <laughs> you always know. And it's, that's kind of annoying to hear too. It's like, oh, just trust your gut. But it's so true. Like it really is. You know. You do. You um, just need the right environment to nurture that like yeah. knowledge that, oh, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So I want to quickly jump into your podcast. So people listening can check you out mm -hmm. if they don't already listen. Um, what got you interested in like starting the podcast? When did you start it? Um, all of that good stuff. Yeah. So I have actually wanted to start a podcast so long. It was like 2015 when I was a freshman in high school or uh, freshman in college, excuse me. Um, I wanted to start a podcast then I was a huge one direction fan. So I was like, I want to have a podcast <laughs> talking about all this. <laughs> yes I can talk about Harry Styles all the time Harry are you listening oh Harry <laughs> Harry are you listening Harry? hi me hi he's me. a listener yeah he's a listener yeah mm -hmm. yeah we know we know yeah um and so but I so from then I've always been interested in podcasts I never had that podcast so don't try looking for it like it doesn't exist but I've always wanted to have one um and you know I never really you know, quote unquote, had time to do those things I like to do or always wanted to explore. Um, and so when I was in postgrad, obviously we went through the pandemic. And so once we were forced to literally go home and be like, we don't have anything else to do, but go online. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I want to start a podcast. And I, at first I was like, I want to really document my thought process through all of this. That's why I call it the bonnet talks. Um, mm -hmm. 
I, the bonnet tox is the reason why I call it that is because, you know, I wear a bonnet as a black girl, all my black girls out there, you know, we have to wear bonnets to protect your hair going to bed. And if you don't want it to be frizzy or looking crazy. So that those are the moments that many people don't see, right? Like that's just like me going to bed at night and I'm just like, all right, well, good night, everyone. Good night, y'all have a good time. Goodbye. You know, and no one sees me in that element. It's a different side. Right. And so I called it that and I at first wanted it to be, you know, almost like a diary of like, this is what I have been going through in post-grad. This is what other people are going through as well. This is how we can relate, but it's really spun into really a platform for, you know, people to tell their stories um, and for us to like to find the commonalities in between that um, on a global scale. And so if you realize on my pod, uh, my podcast, if you go and listen, you know, we talk about everything, right? Everything um, that people are going through in their 20s, whether it's post-grad or dating or, you know, all of those things. <clears throat> but I like to also get different diverse perspectives on it. And when I say diverse, I mean, you know, bringing on my friends who are international as well and having them talk about these 20 something things within their cultural context as well. And it shows like how much we actually all relate <laughs> to a lot of things all the time. Um, and also just talking about a lot of different issues that we might not necessarily talk about really with our friends because it re requires a level of vulnerability. And so I really try and kind of normalize that and bring that out and be like, yeah, th this sucks. Like this, my, this is my job. Like I don't know how to handle this. I don't like it. And I, I don't want to tell people that I don't like it. Like, what am I supposed to do? I, we talk about those things. Um, you know, even when it comes to dating, whether it's like trying to figure out like yourself in the dating world, like what you actually like versus also using dating apps and all of that stuff. Like we talk about all of that, but I think the awesome part is having the opportunity to hear it, not just from my close friends and just people in the US. I think hearing it abroad is so fun too. So yeah, it's, it's fun. <laughs> it's such a great, first of all, like love the name and I love the concept because mm. I think, and it's so ironic too, because I say the same stuff. I'm like, I talk about things that like, I'm nervous to talk about with, but then like what I'm going to talk into a mic and talk to strangers for other strangers. Yeah. Like, I'm like, it doesn't really yeah, make sense. Yeah. But like it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love, I love your podcast. And I think that there's so much goodness in that. And I feel like with my podcast too, I feel like we are able to talk to people all over, but also be able to recognize like, wow, we are all like pretty similar. Like everyone yeah. kind of relates to each other, like no matter where you live, like nothing. And it's so yeah fun and cool to be able to do that. So, um, yeah, yeah. I want everyone to like, check out your podcast too. Cause I think we have very similar, um, like themes going on and I love yeah. that for us. Yes. I love it. <laughs> so where can people listen to your podcast? Pretty much like Spotify, Apple podcasts, all of that. Yes. Apple podcasts, Spotify, Google podcasts, anchor, all of that. Um, and then we're actually where I'm, we're me, <laughs> I'm launching a, a new season, actually, I think in the next few days. Um, and you can start listening to the episodes on YouTube as well. So oh, perfect. Okay, our awesome. avenue for you guys to listen and watch. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Well, I will have everything listed in the show notes. So you can check out on show, um, the bonnet talks and to give her a follow, check her out. Um, thank you so much for coming on today or this morning, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's literally the start of my day for me. It's so funny. You are a trooper. I would not be able to like even say sentences at 8 a.m., but, um, we appreciate it over here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This was so fun. I'm just so excited to meet you too. Yeah, so no, we have to link up DC. Yeah, DC, the DMV, I'll be back. So we'll we'll hang out. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay, well, thank you so much again for coming on. And thanks to everyone for listening. Alrighty, bye everyone. <laughs>Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe to Girl We Gotta Talk on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. That way you never miss a new episode. You can also follow Girl We Gotta Talk on Instagram at Girl We Gotta Talk Podcast and on Twitter at GWGT Podcast for live tweeting and all your favorite pop culture updates. If you want to watch full episodes, check out Girl We Gotta Talk on YouTube and find all of your favorite episodes over there. 
If you liked today's episode, head over to Apple Podcasts, hit the five stars or leave a review and let me know what you thought. I seriously love hearing your feedback. It really means the world to me. Thank you guys again so much for listening and talk to you guys next week. Bye.